beloved of God, called to be saints, grace and peace to you from our God and Father and Jesus Christ. I believe that you are well, that you are excited, and that you are filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. Always ready, always ready to receive from God and the Holy Spirit. We are ready this morning in our hearts, like usual, as usual, to receive the Word of God that are powerful and good to help us in the times such as this. First of all, I just want to encourage all of you not to allow yourself to slip in these days. Don't allow the devil to make you fall or go back to the things of this world. Don't allow him to destroy your life. Because remember, saints, that you are in control and that God is for you who can be against you. One thing that we must remember is that once you are a Christian, once you are born again, you are swimming against the current. You know, you are not swimming downstream, you are swimming against the current. But God will help you to overcome. God will help us to be strong. You know, this word, the word that I give to you, the word that we read, that he has given unto us, means nothing to us if it's not quickened by the Holy Spirit. You know, the whole Bible is a dead book if it's not quickened by the Holy Spirit. And that is my duty to bring to you this word, to give you the word of God so that it may help you. And I believe, and you will know it, that it was being quickened, and made alive by the Holy Spirit in us. Now I love the truth, you know. I love to preach and teach the truth because the truth will set you free. But there's a danger in this. So many, and it's sadly to say, so many of the people, they cannot bear the truth. They cannot handle the truth. Do you know that the truth can become your enemy? when you are standing against it. So many of the people, they don't like the truth. And you know, that's why Paul said, listen to what he said. Paul said, hath I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? No, saints. We must always remember, be open to the truth. So test yourself. You know, in this week, the Holy Spirit dropped into my spirit. The place in, in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus told them uh, about the sower. And then he said to me one thing in the middle of that. The most people are vulnerable and are in the situation. What he has said there, they have a heart of stone, a stony ground, and there's no root in them. Now listen to me when I'm saying this to you. I'm going to read it to you from uh, Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4 verse 16. Listen to what Jesus said. He says, and these are likewise which are sown in stony ground, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it, receive it with gladness. Now remember that he said in verse 14, the sower soweth the word. Now these are the people uh, that were sown in stony ground, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, 
for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, you must know, when one sowed the word, the devil is not satisfied. He doesn't like it. And he will, and it come, he will come and attack that word. And when people have stony ground, you know what that means? When you all the time criticize and say bad things about people and speak bad things and allow the things of the world to penetrate, it will harden your hearts. And bit by bit, you will become harder and harder. And when one saw the truth to those people, they receive it with gladness, but they have a stony heart and there is no roots. Now, immediately because of the word, the devil will come and attack that word. And he will bring offense. And they are offended and they lose it all. It's over. It's gone. You're a goner. You will not be able to stand. I just want to warn you with that this morning. That you must open your heart so that the Holy Spirit may arrange some good ground in your hearts and don't allow the devil to lie to you speak to you all kinds of rubbish i'm going to share with you this morning uh, the word that i'm going to share with you that the lord has laid upon my heart is because of christ's image predestined because of christ's image predestined now there are benefits of salvation the benefits of salvation. I hope with all my heart that all those that listen and ever watch this video may realize and understand that he didn't die for nothing. He gave us salvation, but what is included in that salvation is immense it's amazing do we know do you know the benefits of salvation well we're going to see that this morning and it's so sad that so many of the christians don't understand this it started with the truth of sonship that god wanted us to be a son and he made us to be sons in his son, Jesus Christ. But there are benefits. The reason why he lives in us. There's a purpose why God has given Christ to live in us. That we must become one with him. There is a reason, saints. And this is very important now and eternally. Now in this world, Christ in us, and also for eternity, we are going to be connected with him and reign with him forever. And you know, I'm looking forward to what he has given unto us. Even now, saints, even in this time, I can sense the excitement of Christ be in me. You know, he saved me. From this world. He made me free. He gave me something. That cannot perish. For many years. I am standing. Upon the foundation. Of what he has done in me. And because of that good news. And because of those things. That he has given unto me. I want you to know it. I want you to have it. These things are working in me so that I can bring it to you and you may be part of this. Now, what I want you to know is this. Once you are a Christian, the things that you look at must be the things of eternity. That is your salvation. That is the key for your protection to look at the things in the deathless realm. 
where there is no death. I'm going to show it to you here in the Bible this morning. Because we are sons of oil. You know what that means? We have been anointed by the Son. We are, be, we are being anointed by the Holy Spirit. That's what the word Christian means. Anointed one. That's what the word Christ means. The name Christ means anointed one. So we are anointed in Christ Jesus. And so we have become the sons of oil. We have become Christ-like. We have become one with him. And he wants us to look at the, things, at the things that are eternal. Not at the things that you can see. Listen to what the word says here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Listen to this. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Why? For the things that are visible that you can see now in this world are temporal. Oh, yes. They are temporal. With other words, they can die. They can vanish away. They cannot stand. Because they are brief and fleeting. But the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. That is the things that he wants us to look at. He wants us to look at the things that are above, where Christ is seated. And we are seated with him. No wonder that the very next verse, in the next chapter, he started off, For we know that if this tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, dissolved, we have from God a building, a house, not made with hands, eternal in heavens. What is your desire this morning? Let me ask you this question. What is your desire this morning? Do you desire the things of this world? Do, do you desire the good things of this world? And what this world has to offer? The things that can perish? The things that can die? The things that can go away? That are not eternal? Or do you desire the things that are invisible? You know, when you desire the things that are invisible, you make no your faith. Your faith is in action. And those are the only things that can please God. Your faith. Your faith is the only thing that can please God. It is so, saints, that in this dispensation of grace, we have to believe to be saved. The things that God has promised us are invisible because they are eternal. You cannot detect them with your five physical senses. All the things that you can see with your eyes can put you down, can destroy you, can take you away. What you can see with your senses. But God wants us to be aware of the things that are unseen. Because he wants his power to manifest in us. And that's why God has told you what he has given unto you in Christ Jesus. So that you may believe this. So that you may have the knowledge of what he has done for you. And understand that you are the anointed ones with Christ in you. The hope of glory. So you are called in hope. And saved in hope that you may hope to the things that you cannot see. And the witness is Christ 
in you. There is something else that I want to read to you quickly in Romans chapter 8. The book of Romans chapter 8. Turn in your word, if you have the word there, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read from verse 28. Now, I'm reading this to you so that you can see it is being written or it's been given to Paul in this time, in this dispensation of grace, in the dispensation where God has given unto us grace to be saved so that you and I can have eternal life. These things are the truth. God has revealed his truth to us, his will. What people could not see before, they now can see when God revealed his will unto us. Now, if God reveals his will to me, that is what I want. I don't know about you. But this is what I want. I want to know his will. Because there are things included in the will of God. What God has given unto me that no one knew before. It was kept hidden since the world began. And God has revealed it now unto us. I have the benefit of salvation. I'm going to live forever. Let me give you the gospel this morning. The truth of the gospel. That once you are in Christ, you're going to live forever. And these are the benefits. So what is he saying in Romans chapter 8? Romans chapter 8 verse 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 27, 20, so, sorry, 28. Let me read. And we know, listen how he started off with this. He says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Can you see that? To them who are called according to his purpose. Now, let me just say this quickly. Let me fit this in. In case you don't understand what he was saying about calling. The calling that he's talking about here is not the calling to do something for him here. It's the calling unto salvation. Now, when the New Testament <coughs> is using that word call, it is the Greek word that means vocation. God has a vocation in mind. The Ecclesis is always used in the New Testament of that calling, the origin, the nature and the destiny of which are heavenly. It means it is a heavenly calling. God's invitation to man to accept the benefits of salvation. To accept his calling. That is the calling. So with other words, what God is saying there is that those that are being saved or have received the benefits of salvation and are now born again. To them, these promises belong. It is there for those that want them. And once you have accepted Jesus Christ, these are your benefits. That he has given unto you. And this is what he said here. So let me continue reading. To them who are called according to his purpose. Now there is the purpose. His purpose is, is that we would become sons. And that we will have Christ in us. That was God's purpose. That we will have the image of Jesus Christ in us and that we will become his image will become like him so let us continue in verse 29 he says for whom 
Now, this is amazing, saints. This is amazing. For whom he did for no. What does that mean? For whom he did for no. For he know you before. When? Before he created the world. Before he created the earth. And the heavens and everything else. He knew you. It was in his mind that we are going to have this. I can show it to you quickly. Let me show it to you. In the book, in the book of First Timothy, in the book of First Timothy, <coughs> let me quickly show it to you. Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter one. I just want to read it to you quickly. Second Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 9. Listen to what he says. He's talking about God. Who has saved us and called us. There is that invitation of salvation. He saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus when? Before the world began. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. You that listen to me, you that watch this video this morning, if you are born again, you're part of this. This happened in you. If you are not born again and your life is not right with God, this invitation is for you. It is open for you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I am sorry that I have sinned. I open my heart to you. I receive you into my heart. I want this benefits. I want salvation. I want to live forever. And the word promised us that immediately we are saved. Immediately, God comes and lives in our hearts with Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And this is what he says. Now, back to Romans 8, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Now, that predestination means he predestinate us before he created the earth. To be what? Here it is. Christ, the reason Christ is in us. Because of Christ in us. This is what was in the heart of God. Here he tells us. He predestinated us to be conformed. Do you hear that? To be conformed to what? To the image of his son. Now notice that he uses the name son. That he says son. That means to be the same as he is. To be a son of God in Christ Jesus. That he, Christ, might be the firstborn among many brethren. You know, can you see this? That Jesus Christ become the son through birth. He was the firstborn. Now we are the second, the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and so on and so forth. And he's the firstborn. And we also now, because of that, we have that same image, that same image on the inside. I'm not talking about the outside. One day when Christ is being revealed from heaven and come to, get, to take us home with him, when we will be united with him, we will put on our house from above. <coughs> we will put on that image for everyone to see that same image 
We are going to look like Christ. You know, that is the power that keeps us going. That is the power that keeps us standing so that the devil cannot destroy us. That is the amazing thing that God has planned for us. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, meaning that he has called you to salvation. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. That is all the promises. You know what I can say this morning? You know what you can say this morning? If the devil comes to you and tell you you're a sinner. Or you're just a sinner. You're a failure. You're no good. Maybe people will come to you and tell you you're no good. There's no hope for you. The Bible tells you. What is the Bible telling you? It tells you exactly here that you are justified in Christ Jesus. You know what justified means? It means that I have become righteous as he is righteous. Oh yes, the scripture is telling us that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He, God has made him sin so that we could become the righteousness of God, being justified in Christ Jesus. That is the promise. That is the blessing. You hear me? What is the blessing? The blessing is the justification through faith that he has promised to Abraham. Now in this time, in this hour, we have become justified. And now God promised there is glory that awaits you, saints. God has promised us glory. Amen. Here he tells us, then he also glorified. Oh, Satan, I am justified. There's no condemnation to me anymore. Once I was a sinner, I'm not a sinner anymore. I was saved by grace. Now I'm a son of God. Now I'm a saint. Now I'm the church of God. Now I'm a Christian. I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. And a weapon that is formed against me can prosper. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no judgment to them who are in Christ Jesus. I have him in me this morning. My spirit has become one with him. Because he's in me, I can do all things. Through him that strengtheneth me. Because he is in me, I am stronger. And I am capable of doing things far beyond what the devil can do to me. The weapon that is formed against me will prosper. I am strengthened with his might in the inner man, the hidden man of the heart. What does it mean when he says, I am conformed? That this was his plan for you and me to be conformed. Please. You know, the gospel is not just preaching the gospel for people to be saved and then just leave them. And tell them, okay, everything will be all right with you. Once you're saved, everything will be all right to you. You can go on living and do what you like. And the blessings will come from right and left and center and everywhere. And you will be blessed and be blessed. Okay, God will bless us. But that is not the purpose. The purpose is that we would be conformed to his image, that Christ may take, play, may take image in us and grow in us so that we may grow unto a mature man, the full measure of the statue of Jesus Christ and be mature Amen. and be strong. 
to have his image. I don't want, I don't just want the things of this world. What this world has to offer. To be honest with you, saints. I just don't want to just be blessed here on earth. And everything must go well with me. That is not what God has promised. He says that we will have persecution because we believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. We will go through certain sufferings. <laughs> but if we suffer with him, yes. we will reign with him. There are suffering in this world. It's not God that puts suffering upon you. Suffering comes because, because you were born into this world. Thank God that you were chosen to become a human being in this earth. Now, so that you could be a partaker of His calling. That you could be a partaker of everlasting life. That you can receive salvation. Because the glory that comes. The blessing that comes. Heaven and the new earth. And the things that God has prepared for us. Nothing in this world can compare. What God has for us and what he has prepared for us, saints. Nothing can compare to it. And I'm here to tell you about it. I'm here to give it to you. That's why we make known the knowledge of Jesus Christ unto you. So many saints are walking around without that knowledge. They are, to be frank with you, they are depending upon happiness. The happiness that is just a fleeting moment. If they give you something, you're happy. If something good happens to you in this world, you're happy. But tomorrow, when tomorrow comes and something bad comes along, you're not happy anymore. It's not good anymore. You are offended and all kinds of things are pushing you down. But the things that are coming from God... Causes the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. Joy is far beyond happiness. The joy of the Lord is supernatural. The joy of the Lord is the weapon. Is the power of God in us. If I can have that joy, that joy is a river jumping up in me with the promises of God. And I cannot help myself but giving you the promises every time I'm giving you the word. You open your heart to the truth. I'm, I will not tell you rubbish. Listen, I'm paid of nobody. No, nobody is paying me a salary. I'm not looking for money. I'm standing here for 35 years. More than that, 37 years now. I'm standing. I said to God, listen, God, you sent me. You saved me. You have sent me. You will provide for me. And he has done just that. I'm not pushing anyone for money. But my soul and my life is dedicated unto God for the saving of souls to reveal Jesus Christ through me. He has chosen me to reveal his son in me. So many times I receive <coughs> threats. So many times I receive bad things. They said bad things about me and I have just to cope with it. But the strength in me helped me to cope with it. Before I couldn't do that. Before I wasn't capable of doing that. But now I can love. Now I can forgive. Sometimes it's very hard. The things that happens to you. 
when you help people, when you stand with them, <coughs> when you help them in victory, when you get them in a position where they prosper, where they go through and have good things in their lives and they turn against you and come against you. You have to be the same. You have to keep on loving people. You, you have to keep on preaching the word. You have to keep on teaching the word with the same attitude of love. Doesn't matter what they say. Today they will greet you. Tomorrow they will not. They will turn their backs on you. It's not everyone that does that. But it happens. It will happen in this world. But I am here to tell you there's a joy that's running on the inside of us. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. You know why? He's the rewarder. He's the rewarder. God will reward us because he is our rewarder. When God rewards you, no man can do that. No man can give it to you. <laughs> Only God can give those rewards to you and nothing else like it on earth, nothing on this earth. So to be conformed signifies, here is the truth. It signifies having the same form as another, conform to their future physical conformity to the body, to his body of glory. To his body of glory. This must excite you, saints. He promised us glory. He promised us his glory. It's here in the scriptures. He wanted to give us the glory of the sons. I want to show it to you in the word. This, yes, I can see somebody is laughing of joy. And I think it's, I think it's Marisa. <laughs> she always laughing. The joy of the Lord is overwhelming us. Yes, and that is good for us to break out in laughter because what the Lord has done for us. Glorious. Let me show you in the Bible. <coughs> Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, The mystery being revealed, <laughs> which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can you see that? What is my hope of this glory that he has promised? The glory of the sons. Well, the same chapter of Romans 8 tells us, that the creation is waiting earnestly upon the manifestation or to see the manifestation of the sons of God, the manifestation of the glory of the sons of God. <clears throat> Everything is looking forward to that day when the glory that Christ has promised us, what the Father has promised us, will be revealed. Now Christ is in me, it's that hope of glory. Can you this morning confess that Christ is in you? Can you go around and confess at your work to those who work with you and stand with you day by day, in your daily living, can you confess and tell them, Christ is in me? Or are you ashamed? Are you bold enough? That's what I'm doing here. I've decided. No one will stop me. <clears throat> I will blast it out. Christ is my Lord and Savior. He's in me. He's my hope of glory. Now, Jesus says, if you, the Lord says, if you are ashamed of me before people, I will be ashamed of you before my father. These are all truths 
that we cannot hide. We have to know it. I will confess it before men. I will rejoice. Doesn't matter what they say. But God loves them. God loves us all. He doesn't want us to perish. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Listen to what Paul is saying here. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God and we have seen what is the wisdom of God. We have learned it in the past weeks. The wisdom of God is Christ Jesus. With other words, we have speak Christ, which is the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world, which God has ordained before the world unto our glory, unto your glory, unto my glory, my children. I want them in heaven. I want them to be a partaker of the glory of God. Please, if you're not in the way anymore, if you don't serve him with your whole heart anymore, turn around my dear brother and my sister, Children, turn around and press in. Take hold of what he has for you. The devil wants to take you to hell. For eternity to burn in hell is not a game. It's not for human beings to be there. It's not a place for you to be. God didn't create the hell for people. He created hell for demons, for the devil and demons. But people choose for themselves to go there. But he has given us grace, died for us 2,000 years ago so that we may live forever. I want to take my children with me. I want to take my ministry, my, my, my church, my people. I want to take them with me. That's what I have promised him. I want you to be there. I want everybody that listens to me I want them to be there. I stir myself. I rejoice in the Lord all the time, even though I'm not feeling like it. Many times in my life, I doesn't feel like it. But I choose to stir myself up in the joy of the Lord, like David said. I will stir myself in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord. Now Paul comes along and he says, rejoice in him. Again, I say, rejoice, 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 rejoice. Take joy, take joy, rejoice. I can do only so if I believe his word, if he's in my heart, if I trust the truth, the truth will set me free. Who is the truth? Christ is the truth. Amen. If I reject the truth, I reject Christ. How can you do that? How can we choose between Jesus and the devil and then choose the devil? Which is a liar, which is a murderer. He will destroy you. His plan with you is to murder you. To put you in hell for eternity. But God wants to save you. Jesus Christ died for you so that we could be saved and live with him forever. So his whole plan was that we would be like him. I want you to confess this morning, there where you are. God's plan and purpose for me was to be like Jesus. Or to be like Christ. I want you to confess that. If you cannot do that, it is time for you to begin to see what God has for you. Take this world. Give me Jesus. I don't want this world. I don't want the things of this world. I'm just an ambassador. I'm a traveler. Going through this, this world now. But while I am here. I will preach the truth. I was there. I was a part of this world. But there's no match. I will not choose the devil. I choose Jesus Christ as my Savior. 
and my Redeemer. And you know, all things work together for good to those who love Him. I love Him. I love Him because He died for me. <laughs> I love Him because he, he poured into my heart by His Spirit the love of Christ. Amen. And His whole plan was that I would be like Him. Well, I can show you quickly. I must show you these scriptures, saints. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen to what Paul is saying here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6. He says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness when he created the earth, hath shined to that same light, which is Christ, has shined into our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge. You know, this is extremely important that you must have the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. What I've just taught you, the light, there must be the light, the knowledge, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, which he has planned for you. Otherwise you'll be dull. Here it is written. How are you going to escape it? No, you cannot. I give it to you. After today, you will never be able to say, I didn't know it. I'm giving it to you. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God, which is in the face of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you know, Jesus Christ is the manifestation of the glory of God. It's in his face. Now notice what Paul is saying here. Notice what he says here in verse 7. This glory which is in the face of Jesus Christ, the glory of God. The knowledge that we have, the light of this knowledge, we have this treasure. Oh my Lord, it is more than silver and gold. <clears throat> it is more than diamonds. I have this treasure even in an earthen vessel. Yes. Now you have it. Now you have it. And then he calls it, he says, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Yes. You know, the English language or any other language, the best they can do is call it excellent. When somebody is doing something good, we tell him excellent. <laughs> but you, do you know how low that word is in connection with the excellence of God? What he is talking about here? <clears throat> when we can see it with our eyes of the Spirit, you will tremble at his excellence. <sighs> The excellence of God. And this is what he says. That the excellency of his power. That it may show it's not from us. But it comes from God. My God that has created everything. Has given this power in me. And because I have it in an earthen vessel. I say, Lord, this is not me. It is you. It cannot be me that keeps me standing. Verse 16. Listen here. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not but through, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man 
is renewed day by day. The hidden man of the heart. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While, and here it is, what I taught you just a while ago. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Yes. For the things which are seen are temporal, yes. but the things which we cannot see are eternal. <laughs> Please, I bring you internal, eternal message this morning. I don't want to preach a normal Sunday service. I don't want an ordinary church. I want a supernatural church that rise up in the glory of God that have communion with Christ in them, that are a partaker of the benefits of the cross, the benefits of salvation. So he gave us his knowledge. He gave us his word to influence our minds. You know, <laughs> the biggest problem today is the minds of men. Listen to me. The problem is in the minds of men. Their minds are not renewed. They think as the world thinks. They see the things as the world sees it. They depend upon their earthly controlled minds, which are being controlled from the outside through circumstances, through vision, through what you see, for, uh, through situations and things that are happening surrounding you, <coughs> bad or good, you know, even the good things in this world is not good enough. Yes. Because the tree of good and evil are both sides the same. There are good things in this world that can destroy you. Yes. That can put you down. Only God is good. Yes. And his goodness is forever. Amen. And this is what I'm giving you this morning. God wants your mind. He wants your thinking and he wants your behavior to be influenced. Yes. How can we do this? By renewing our minds. Yes. Why well, I'm saying this, says, Because from next week on, I'm going to teach you about the renewing of the mind. And we are going to see into every area of the renewing of the mind. But, but, but let me explain to you in the last few minutes that I have left to talk to you quickly. God wants us, our behavior to change. And, you know, to be a human, mean, a, a human being is to be born with your earthly mind. And when you grow up, you see the things with your earthly mind. You grow up with the earthly mind that are used to the things of this world. And you are being controlled from the outside inwards. But once God saved us, he says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Piercing down to the asunder of spirit and soul. Soul is your earthly mind, your will, emotions. There is your spirit and there's your soul and you live in a body. Now your spirit is connected to your soul. Now once you are a sinner, your soul is Leading your body is controlling your body. Your mind is controlling your body. It's controlling it according to the things of this world. But once you're saved, 
The word of God comes to you. The Holy Spirit explains the word through preaching, giving you the word as you read it and reveal the word to you. What happens is that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword and it piercing through the dividing a subtle of spirit and soul and change it around so that you have been steered by your spirit now and be controlled by your spirit and your mind being renewed by the word of God. And you begin to see the things as God sees it. Yes. And understand the things as he sees it. As he understands it. You begin to have the mind of Christ in you. You're now being influenced by his mind. What is his mind? The word is his mind. Amen. We must fill ourselves with the word. And the Holy Spirit helps us. Now listen to this verse quickly. I have to finish quickly now. Listen to this in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. And the second verse <coughs> tells us. I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God. That ye present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may know what is the good and the acceptable and perfect will of God. See you? Can you see there? Can you see, uh, saints? This is what God has for you. So his mind can become our mind. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 tells us just that. He tells us that we have the mind of Christ. Because our minds is now being renewed. We have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the word of God that has been put into us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let me finish with this. Next week we will continue. Whoever, whoever controls your mind is in control of your body. Remember this. While you are in this body, I, I, it doesn't matter who you are. Whoever is control, in control of your mind controls your outer body. Is it the world, the world and Satan and the circumstances and situations? Whether bad news, sickness, disease? Will you allow them to control your mind and be in control of your body? Or are you going to believe the report of the Lord? The report of the Lord is within us. The word of God is the report of the word. Of the Lord. The report of the Lord tells me I'm free. The report of the Lord tells me I'm more than a conqueror. The report of the Lord tells me I can reign over these things. So I get my mind renewed by the report of the Lord and now it is he that is in control of my mind. Amen. And when he is in control of my mind, my body is under control of the doctrines of Christ. And the revelations of Christ and the glory of Christ and the, and the glory, victory of Jesus Christ in my life. Now, wrong thinking, wrong thinking is never going to produce the right behavior. What you and I need is the right behavior. Wrong thinking will never produce right behavior. Forget it. Right thinking, when I talk about right thinking, it is the thinking of the Lord, the mind of the Lord, the word. So your thinking are going to be changed. It is God's plan to change our thinking into the right direction, into one direction, about the kingdom of God. Amen. I believe God that this word this morning are in your spirit 
and may produce the fruit that only God can give. I believe that you will have a hunger and a desire for God even more because the time is over. This world is in a mess. Jesus is coming. It can happen now every day. Any day now, Jesus can come and take us home. And if you're not ready and not waiting for him, you're going to stay behind. And then you don't want to be here because of all the hell that is going to break loose on earth. There will be no saving anymore. Will you be prepared when they kill your children and tell you, whom do you choose? Jesus of the Antichrist? If you choose Jesus, they kill your children in front of you. Your wife. You. If you choose the Antichrist, you will live. But then you will never see God again. Never see Jesus Christ. And if you stay behind, the only thing that's going to, the Bible says the only thing that's going to save you is when you be beheaded, they will cut off your head. So rather, push in now and receive Jesus. That when the trump sounds, we go with him for eternity. Be ready. That's my desire for you. I love you. Precious saints, precious church of God, everyone that have listened, I love you. And God's blessings are upon you. And God's grace is upon you. And God's peace is upon you. In Jesus' name. Until we see again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bye-bye.